Hi guys, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well and are looking forward to another art haul video. It's been a while since my last one, but I've been saving up a few art supplies I've bought over the last few months. So today I'm going to unbox them with you. I'll also be swatching some of the supplies out and giving you a few clues as to what might come up in future videos. And some of the things may surprise you, so I hope you enjoy it. These are all supplies that I've bought from Jackson's and I'll leave a link to their website in the description box. This is an affiliate link which means if you place an order using it I will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. If you're new to Jackson's and you create an account you will also get 10% off your first order. I really appreciate all your support as it enables me to continue making content for my channel. So without further ado let's open up this first box. So inside we have two smaller packages which I'll open in a minute and at the bottom here I have an A4 printed colour chart from Schmincke. I love Schmincke Horrodan watercolours but up until now I haven't had a catalogue of all their products and this was just 10p so I thought it was worth getting as a useful reference. On to the first box and in here I have a selection of watercolours. There's a few new colours to try, as well as a tried and tested favourite, and some that I ordered for an upcoming video. So to start I have two new colours to me by Daniel Smith, Quinacridone Burn Orange and Enviro Friendly Red Iron Oxide. They look fairly similar from the outside, but I'll be swatching them out later so we can get a better look. The next three watercolours are from Windsor & Newton's Professional range and they are Permanent Magenta, Gold Ochre and Windsor Green Blue Shade, all in the small 5mm size. The Magenta and Green are for a comparison video I'm working on with Windsor & Newton Student or Cotman range and the Gold Ochre is a new colour to try. Lastly, in this small box, I have a few more large tubes. Starting with another of Daniel Smith's Enviro Friendly watercolours. This one's Brown Iron Oxide. I do love my earthy brown colours, though this one looks darker than the other two. And from what I can remember, this is another granulating colour like the Red Iron Oxide. I also have Windsor & Newton's Cadmium Free Yellow and an old favourite that I've run out of, Transparent Orange. Now onto this rather unusual shaped package and this one is something I came across purely by chance. It's not something I've used before but I was really intrigued by it so thought I'd try it out. This is Schmincke's Aqua Modelling Paste for use in watercolour painting and from what I can gather behaves a bit like a watercolour ground but at the moment I'm not sure what the difference is so if you've used it please do let me know in the comments box below. In any case I thought it sounded interesting so I'm excited to experiment with it and see what it can do. Now there's one more box to open before we get swatching so let's dive right in. On the top here we have a rather larger than I expected airtight palette by Mugello. These can be used with watercolours but are mainly intended for use with acrylic and oil paints to prevent them drying out between paint sessions. I haven't used oils before and I haven't painted in acrylics for a while either but I have got some acrylic gouache to try out so that's what I ordered the palette for. I'll show you what colours I got in a minute. For now it's back to watercolour again and to a limited edition colour from Schmincke. This one is another of their granulating colours called Ocean Grey and it looks so gorgeous I couldn't resist getting it so I'm really looking forward to swatching this one out. At the bottom here we have a bit of a mixture. Let's start with the Pro Art brush set. This mixed set of four brushes is to use with the acrylic gouache as I don't want to risk spoiling my best watercolour brushes. These are still nice brushes and they're suitable for all media 
They're also quite reasonably priced and I think I paid just £5.50 for the set of four on Jackson's. There's another couple of brushes in here but I also bought another Molotow One For All marker. This one is in the colour Natural White and has a 2mm nib. You may have heard me mention these before as I also have a bright white one and I really like it for adding in highlights or whiskers over the top of watercolour. But I thought this more natural white would give a more natural look to animals whiskers so we'll test that out today as well. The nib is broader than I thought it would be, but I think it could still work. These last two brushes are both silver black velvet ones, and this size 8 brush I bought to replace my current size 8 brush, which has seen better days now. This is without a doubt my go-to brush, as it's super versatile and holds a nice point, so if you haven't tried them before I would definitely recommend them. It's not cheap at £18.40, but they do last a good long time if you look after them. This next one is a synthetic script liner brush size 0. And I bought this to try either for adding fur or hair detail to my animal paintings, or maybe even to try out on different subjects that I've got earmarked for future videos. This one costs £6.50. Moving on to something completely different again, and we have three Neocolor One wax crayons from Karen Dash. I do have a white one of these that I also bought open stock, and I've been enjoying experimenting with it both as a wax resist underneath watercolour, as well as to add texture over the top. So I thought I'd try a few more colours. Here I have light grey, salmon, and Sahara yellow. I'll give these a swatch out at the end of this video as well, so you can see what I mean. Now there's just one more supply I've got to show you before that, and that's the Acrylic Wash by Holbein. This is another new supply to me, and one which I've been looking into trying for a while. I'm not going to swatch these out today, as I'm planning a separate video on them, but the colours I've got are Light Apricot and Pale Peach, Cream yellow, ivory white, and beige. All very light and neutral, but my idea is to use them maybe over the top of watercolours and alongside this bright set of 24 colours that my husband kindly bought me as a present. So I'm looking forward to trying them out and seeing what I can do with them. It's probably going to be a big learning curve, but I believe that it's good to challenge yourself and try new things, as it helps you grow as an artist. So now it's time for the really fun part, the swatching. The paper I'm using for this is Arteza Expert Watercolour Paper in a Pad. So first up is Daniel Smith's Brown Iron Oxide. This is an earth-friendly watercolour containing pigment PBR6. This is a really beautiful, deep, saturated dark brown with a brilliant granulation. So it's right up my street. It's semi-transparent and has excellent light fastness. Next is the Quinacridone Burn Orange. This contains pigment P048. It's transparent with low staining and it's also granulating with excellent light fastness. This one reminds me of Burnt Sienna, but it's a lot more intense. I'm looking forward to trying this one out in mixes with other colours on my palette. The second of the Enviro friendly watercolours is Red Iron Oxide Pigment PBR6 again. This is also non-staining and is a deep brick red semi-transparent brown in its mass tone. 
but it becomes more of an earthy rose colour when you add water. I think its granulating properties will make it really interesting to use in a variety of situations. Windsor & Newton's Transparent Orange has been a favourite of mine for some time now and I've used it a lot to add a pop of colour to many an animal painting. I love how clean and bright this one is. This next one is Windsor & Newton's Gold Ochre and is not a colour I've tried before. It contains pigment PY42 and is semi-transparent. It's a lovely warm brownish yellow, not too dissimilar in hue to other yellow ochres I have, but this one feels a bit brighter, less dull maybe. Another Windsor & Newton watercolour now and this one is Cadmium Free Yellow. I bought this as an alternative to Cadmium Yellow for a comparison video I'm working on like I mentioned. It's a really strong warm yellow and like the Cadmium containing version is opaque. It also has excellent light fastness so perfect for bright sunflowers. Let me know if you've tried this one yourself. Moving on, we have Windsor Green Blue Shade, pigment PG7. This is transparent and staining, and again was bought for the professional versus student grade video. Permanent magenta, also known as quinacridone magenta, contains pigment PV19 and is another highly staining transparent pigment. This one makes me want to go out and paint brightly coloured flowers, but I've also used it alongside burnt sienna when painting brown animal fur. This is a beautiful colour. And for the last of the watercolours, let's watch the Schwinker Horodam Limited Edition Ocean Grey. This is a three pigment mix comprising PB29, PG50 and PBK6. It's another granulating watercolour that is semi-opaque and semi-staining. And just look how beautiful it is. I absolutely love it. I've never painted waves or seascapes before, but if there was ever a watercolour that can inspire me to do so, it would be this one. It'll be fun to see how it dries too. Before we go, I just want to quickly swatch out the three near colour one crayons and the one for all marker. So this is the light grey. Unlike the near colour 2s, these near colour 1s aren't water soluble, so can be used as a wax resist underneath watercolour or to add texture over the top. I need to do a bit more experimenting with them to see if it'll work, but I like the idea. This is cold pressed paper I'm using, so it has a bit of texture to it, 
but I can still lay down colour easily enough and they resist the watercolour pretty well too. The natural white marker you may not be able to see too well on its own, but you can see it better when I layer it over the dried watercolour. You can even get quite a nice fine line just by using a light flicking motion with the pen. And here I'm just testing out the crayons over the watercolour too. I've almost run out of room on this page but I've just got space enough to try out this little size zero script liner brush. I think this is going to be great for fine lines and whiskers but as with any new brush I'll need a bit more practice before I'm totally comfortable with it. I've labelled each swatch up so I can refer back to it later and I just love how the ocean grey has separated and dried. But that's it for today, I hope you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you have and let me know in the comments which of the supplies you're most excited to see me use or if any of them have sparked your curiosity. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you all in the next one.